Okay, so that's the last example we need to do from uh, 1.5 is number 14. <clears throat> so basically the idea is, this is an experimental electric solar car. They're telling us it completed a thousand mile race in 35 uh, hours, 600 miles during daytime, 400 miles at night, and they're telling us it averaged 20 miles per hour more during the day than it did at night. So the idea is, what was the speed of the car during daytime? So you guys were kind of going through ideas and seeing, okay, what can be done for this uh, example? And I think, Brandy, it was you who mentioned definitely going to be a distance rate and time problem, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're talking in terms of distance, rate, and time. And uh, Brian, I actually did find something online about that little triangle you were talking about. So it's distance on the top, and then your speed or rate and time on the bottom. So if you're trying to find the distance, it's gonna be the product of R and T, the two on the bottom. If you're trying to find R or T, you're gonna be doing as a fraction. So distance over rate will give you time, or distance over time will give you rate. So I think that's kind of how that triangle system works out. If not, you can obviously remember what I call as the dirt formula, right? D equals R times T to help you out with. Okay, so let's talk about daytime and nighttime. So they're telling us in daytime, the car is covering 600 miles. 400 at night. And they're telling us the car does 20 miles per hour uh, faster during the daytime than nighttime. So how can we set up that speed, that rate? And you use X plus 20 for day? For day or night? Yeah, so if you're using X as the speed at nighttime, then you would have to do X plus 20 at daytime because you're averaging faster. The other way to set that up would be, since they are actually asking us to find what is the average speed during daytime, I would actually do X as the daytime speed, which means how would your nighttime speed change then? It would have to be X minus 20, yeah. So you can try it either way. If you wanted to do X plus 20 for daytime and X at nighttime, it's not gonna make a difference, but usually the variable you are trying to find is the variable we set as X, right? What else are they telling us in terms of time? It took them 35 uh, hours, yeah, to do the thousand miles, but are they telling us anything specifically in terms of day and night? That would be a distance. And they're telling us about the speed. Are they telling us anything about time? No, they're not. So actually your time is going to have to come from using this formula here. So if I'm trying to find time, which means I need to take the distance and divide it by rate so that I can get my time, right? So that means our time uh, values here will be for daytime. We're taking a distance of 600 miles at a speed of X. For nighttime, we are going a distance of 400 miles at a speed of X minus 20. So this is where that 35 hour is gonna come into play. So they are telling us for a total of those thousand miles, our vehicle travels 35 hours, which means you're taking the time it took to travel during the day plus the time it took to travel during the night. And that has to add up to 35 hours, right? So that's actually where your formula will come from. Now, if you guys did X plus 20 and Brandy, you can still continue doing that. So you would have X plus 20 here and X over here, but you will still get the same exact value uh, except your X will represent the speed at night. My X represents the speed at day. So they will just see that difference of 20 miles in that number, okay? All right, so what should we do next to uh, solve this? Cross multiply. 
In a way, yes. No. What's that magic term I'm looking for? Least common denominator, right? You have to find your denominator uh, and then multiply. Because, you know, cross product would work if we didn't have that 600 plus the 400 to two different fractions. But since we have two different fractions here, you're going to have to find a common denominator. So obviously, you can think of 35 as being 35 over 1. Um, what will your least common denominator be in this case? Just a product of the two denominators. It's going to be x times x minus 20. Okay. Now, we had looked at problems like these. I think it was section 1.1 or 1.2. So this is where I would take my x and x minus 20 and multiply with each term of my equation. So I'd multiply that my LCD with the first plus multiply my LCD with the second term. And, uh, sorry, that should be equal. Take my LCD and multiply it with the 35. Because <clears throat> remember, I tried to get rid of my denominator so we don't have to worry about fractions anymore. Uh, and that means on the first term, our x will cancel out. Right? What cancels out on the second one? Very good. X minus 20 will cancel out. And then, of course, nothing cancels out on the right hand side, which means we'll go ahead and multiply those. On this side, we will need to distribute that 600 with the X minus 20. We'll need to multiply the 400 with the X, so everything that's left behind. sure why you did that. Okay, so let's see, we are taking our 600, multiplying with x minus 20 for the first term. We're taking our 400, multiplying it with x, and then multiplying everything on the right hand side. So what does that first term end up becoming? 600 times x minus 20. Uh, yes, because you're doing 6 times 2, which would be 12, and then, yeah, putting on those three zeros, so 12,000. Very good. Of course, 400 times x will become 400x. Now, you know, if it helps on the right-hand side, you can actually take that 35 and just bring it in front with the x term. And then you are literally just multiplying 35x inside of your parentheses. So 35x times x will give us 35x squared minus 35x times 20. Seven hundred x, yeah. Very good. So you can see we got rid of our denominators. And now, once we combine all our terms, we will have our quadratic equation here. Okay, so since I have the 35x squared minus 700x on the right side, I guess we could just move everything to the right hand side. But let's go ahead and combine our terms on the left. So what can I combine on the left-hand side? Very good, yeah. Combine the 600 with the 400, which will end up becoming 1,000x. And we still have that negative 12,000 there. Right-hand side will stay as it is. And then start moving your terms to the right so we can start out with that 1,000x. You can see we have an x term here. We have an x term here, so go ahead and move that. And what do you end up getting?
And then I would actually do the same thing with the 12,000. If I clean this up and you can do this in one step, you can break it down like I am. What's 700 and 1,000 together? Yeah, negative 1,700 X. And then the last thing to do is move that 12,000. So we should get zero on one side. 35x squared minus 1700x plus 12,000 on the right hand side. Now, how would you go about solving it from here? Not really, because we brought them all. One side, you don't really want to separate them by moving it to the other side. Yeah, so at this point, you're thinking about how do I solve our quadratic equation, right? You've got your ax squared plus bx plus c. You can try making these numbers smaller so you can see what goes into all of them. If not, Use that as your A, B, and C values, and I would probably use the quadratic formula to solve this. Now, if you did want to reduce it, are you seeing any number that might be common between 35, 1700, and 12,000? Five, yeah, because uh, your numbers are ending in five and zero. So if you divide everything by five, so basically divide each term by five, you will end up working with smaller numbers. What do you get? Mm -hmm. Seven x squared, five goes into 35 seven times. Sorry? Yeah, five into 1,700, 340x, and the last one. Ooh, missing a zero there. The 12,000, right? Yeah, should be 2,400. So that's the only difference. You would just work with smaller numbers if you wanted to keep the original numbers you can, but that means you're looking at really large values. You can simplify it. Like I said, use your quadratic formula. So again, your quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac and the whole thing divided by 2a. So plug those values in and let me see what numbers you are looking at. Identify your a, b, and c values. those into your formula and then at this point use your calculator to simplify right So we had kind of looked at examples similar to this last time. You can see you have two negative signs here on that negative B term, right? Two negatives will end up becoming positive. And then inside the square root, what's 340 squared? Yeah, 
it's going to be a pretty large number. And then you are, of course, doing 4 times 7 times 2,400. That will come out to be 67,200. I'm not sure. Hopefully, we'll get a nice clean answer, but oh, denominator will be 14. So let me see. Six. Okay, that's not too bad. You have inside the radical 48,400 when you subtract those two numbers. Is that a perfect square? Is it? You sure? Yeah. Okay. So when we take the square root of 48,400, what do we get? 220. 220, yeah. It is actually a perfect square, which means we should get nice answers here, hopefully. So you end up then with uh, 340. Once add 220, divide by 14. Once subtract the 220, divide by 14. You will come up with two different answers. So once with the addition, once with the subtraction. And if somebody will tell me what those numbers are. Okay, very good. And is it repeating or rounded? Okay. And remember, what did we define our x values as if you go up back to the top? x was the speed, right? And in our case, we defined x as the daytime speed. Um, if, Brandy, you still kept it as your nighttime speed, then your answer will be different. Okay? So x is the speed that the car should be driving during daytime. And then remember, they told us that the speed for daytime, can do that there. The speed for daytime was 20 miles more than the speed at nighttime. So think about it. Can your speed for daytime be 8.57 miles per hour? Because if that's the daytime speed, I would say scrap that car, start over, right? Because that's too slow. So in this case, obviously, that means we end up discarding this answer because this speed is too slow. So your answer is going to be 40 miles per hour for the, oh, that's gonna be the average speed. during daytime. So keep in mind with these quadratic formulas, and you saw that with number 13 also last time, we got two different answers and then we had to decide which answer makes more sense for our application. So that's the same thing happening here with number 14. You're getting two answers after solving your quadratic formula and then you have to decide which answer makes more sense. So the slower speed goes out, and we keep it at 40 miles per hour, which means what is the nighttime speed then? Yeah, it's going to be 20 miles per hour since daytime was 20 more than nighttime. Hey, anybody have questions?